Hey everyone, and welcome back to the second episode of Dev Mall Walking. Today we're taking a trip to the heart of London's financial district, Canary Wharf, which is also home to one of the city's largest shopping areas. Comprised of five different sections, Cabot Place, Canada Place, Churchill Place, Crossrail Place and Jubilee Place, these malls are anything but dead. And why would they be when they cater to more than 120,000 people who work in the immediate area? It's home to around 200 shops, restaurants and services, which is just under half of what you'll find at Westfield, London. For context, that's not only London's biggest mall, it's also Europe's largest indoor shopping centre. Much of the shopping here takes place underground, which reminds me a lot of the Pacific Centre, another underground shopping mall in Vancouver, Canada. It feels a lot like a rabbit warren and is really easy to get lost in, especially because four of the five malls have names beginning with C. Not exactly helpful. The mall thrives, not just because of its proximity to enormous footfall, we've seen before that this doesn't always help malls, but because it targets consumers with a laser-like focus. Most stores cater to a business audience, smart shoes, suits, ties, that kind of thing, which makes sense given that the average salary of workers in this area is around £100,000 or about $130,000. What I really like about the space is that it's home to a ton of very compact units, some of which we'll see in a minute. Many of the smaller units feel more like pop-ups than fully-fledged stores, which offers an interesting model for other malls in my opinion. Let customers get a look at the new merchandise, pick up sale items, then direct them online for more purchases. The Canary Wharf malls have done a pretty good job of diversifying too. In addition to clothing stores, you'll find banks, a post office, restaurants, hairdressers, dog groomers, dry cleaners, spas, optometrists, just about everything you'll ever need. You can get your back cracked right there in the middle of the mall if you want to. Get a short story printed for free. Or even register to vote for the next US president. Maybe this shouldn't be surprising, given the long hours that those in the area are expected to work, but the estate feels as much like a fully-fledged underground city as it does a mere retail experience. Just over an air bridge from the malls is the Crossrail Place roof garden, built by the same architects as the Gherkin and City Hall. It's unbelievable how serene this little enclave of peace and quiet is, given that it's so close to these busy malls. It's divided into east and west, with plants reflecting each side of the world, and makes for a nice escape of the hustle and bustle at the mall's opposite. If you're lucky, you might even catch a glimpse of an influencer out there getting shots in the wild. Joni Mitchell once sang that they paved paradise and put up a parking lot. I guess that's fair enough, but at least in the case of the developers' biodiversity measures and stuff like this roof garden, they've tried to capture something of the natural world too. 
even if they did stick a barbecue restaurant at one end of it. In what's quickly becoming a tradition in these videos, I grabbed some footage of the Canary Wharf malls around closing time so you can get a feel for just how different this place is when it isn't so full of people. It's almost as calm as the roof garden, but in an entirely different way. This footage was taken around 7.45pm, which might seem early for a mall to close, but it makes perfect sense when you consider where we're talking about. By this time, people have either headed home after a hard day's work in the city, or will be settling down at their desks for the night shift. Either way, there's no one around to visit the malls. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As ever, please like and subscribe, or follow on Instagram, linked in the description below for more. Thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye from Canary Wharf.